Yeah. Who knows of a show called One Day Leader? Yeah. I was on season four of One Day Leader, right? And I ended up winning the show. But um, the whole show is all about building up young entrepreneurs, building up young leaders, and teaching people to become positive. Because when you're positive, um, and it opens up doors for you to become successful. It allows you to have the right conversations, speak to the right people, network very well. So I want us to start off in a good mood. I know it's early in the morning, guys. It's a Saturday. Um, 11 o'clock is still early on a Saturday. Am I right, guys? Right. <laughs> okay, so I want you guys to do this with me, okay? I'm going to say, you are amazing. And I want you guys to say, I am amazing. Can we do it? Yes. Okay, cool. So let's go on three. One, two, three. You are amazing. I, I am amazing. amazing. Guys, it's so soft, man. The guys from you, those guys from Dead Sea Sea can't hear you. <laughs> you are amazing. I am amazing. You are amazing. I am amazing. You are amazing. I am amazing. Are amazing. Are amazing. That's good, good. Look, my name is Zarif Menti. Like I said, I'm 25 years old. I'm a young entrepreneur. I'm also a lawyer by profession. So I studied um, and got an LLB. Um, but I'm someone who's very passionate about entrepreneurship. We're living in a country now in South Africa where there's a 27% rate for unemployment, but then there's us as young people who are sitting in this room under the age of 35. For us, the unemployment rate is 57%. Now imagine 27% for South Africa, 57% for us. The only way it's going to change is, and we speak about this all the time, the only way it's going to change is if we change the system, okay? The system that we're currently living in right now is that you guys come to UKZN, you, you do well at university, you get bursaries, you obviously work at corporate like firms or all different companies, and then the system continues. You have kids, the kids come to university, the kids go to um, work in a company, and then the system continues. No new jobs are being created, no new opportunities are being created. You guys earn a, a specific amount of income and it never changes, okay? You can only reach a specific gap, like that's it. That's the most that you're gonna get. There's a cap to it, it's never gonna get more than that. But the only way we can ever change that is through entrepreneurship. Because the whole idea of entrepreneurship is that if I'm a young person and I'm 25 years old and I own a company, for example, it can be like my clothing company, I'm gonna employ five of my friends or five people that I know that I, I know can bring my business to the next level, okay? They all get income sources. They, the minute they all, each one of them has their own business ideas, each one of them will want to open up their own business on the side and they'll employ three other people. And before you know it, you're creating a domino effect of, um, of young people actually getting employment. And that's how you reduce the unemployment rate. And that's what we're trying to push out so much in South Africa now. We want to push out entrepreneurship in South Africa. So I just want to cover some of the different aspects that I think are very important and what makes a lot of us as young entrepreneurs fail on our businesses. You know, they say that within the first two years of your business, so you can go out, you can be excited and you want to start up a business, but within the first two years, 94% of businesses fail. 94% of businesses close their doors. 94% of businesses can't even run after that. They're not efficient after that. They can't run, they fail. And why is that so? It's because a lot of entrepreneurs don't have the fundamental skills that you need when it comes to entrepreneurship, okay? We come to UKZN, you go to UJ, you go to VITS, they teach you what's in the system. They don't teach you on how to actually make good money, how to really you know, build up a network, how to really build up your business. And that's the most important thing. So we want to teach you guys those important concepts, okay? I just want to cover some of the fundamental things, right? And I'm going to speak about um, personal experiences and, and explain to you what I'm saying. So the first thing is, as an entrepreneur, you have to be persistent and consistent, okay? Guys, say it with me. Persistent and? Consistent. Persistent and? Consistent. Okay. When I was 19 years old, I wrote a book, okay? My book's available today in exclusive books, but I'm not going to finish the story. I wrote a book at the age of 19. I wanted this book out in all the big bookstores. I wanted my book next to Robert Kiyosaki. How many of you guys know who Robert Kiyosaki is? Yeah? I always wanted to see my book there. You know, on the, I want people to go into exclusive books and buy my book. Guys, I contacted 19 different publishers, okay? 19 different big publishers. Guess what each one of them told me? Take a guess. Do you think they said yes or no? 
each one of them said no some of them send me emails they rejected me within like 15 minutes i send them an email 15 minutes later i got an email back saying look we're not looking at getting new authors in sorry you don't know what you're doing um your business will never become successful your book will never ever succeed you don't know how can a 19 year old write a book about motivation and success and all of these things guys that can destroy you you know at 19 years old you have dreams of getting your book into a store and it can destroy you completely you can feel as if what they're saying is actually true right and how many times does it, does it happen to us where someone completely just lets you down tells you you're not good enough tells you you shouldn't do something doesn't it really affect you inside you know what i'm saying so um guys i went back i looked at my book i believed in my book i really believe that my book can actually add value somewhere and that's the most important thing as an entrepreneur is that you must always consider there's problems all around us okay people create problems so in this room there's people here who have problems and there's people here who can provide solutions to those problems okay i'll give you an example okay let's, let's use a simple example um someone for example might need um, a service of let's say plumbing okay there might be a plumber in this room right now and you guys can link but how do you actually link you link through networking okay that's why i'm saying it's very important as a young person that you speak to every single person in this room it's important that you guys spend time speaking to every single person in this room because networking isn't only networking with your high patrice mutsepes it's networking amongst yourselves that's how successful entrepreneurs become successful is that you work within your own community and then you grow out you don't look for big business because that's how you fail as a business okay but going back to my story now guys i wanted to, i wanted this book out in exclusive books i wanted my book in exclusive books everyone told me no the whole concept of being persistent and consistent is that you have to look for validation within yourself you have to believe within yourself you have to believe that you have what it takes to become successful i believe that my book was going to change someone's life you know anyway i released my book myself i self published my book just like how dj spoo does it and guys let me tell you something if you want to write a book don't go to a publisher self publish your book number one rule self publish your book best thing you can ever do if your book costs 200 rand 140 rand of that money goes to exclusive books of CNA you only get 60 rand profit if you self publish your book you lose 20 rand the other 180 rand comes to you that's why DJ Spook created that platform he created the idea of self publishing how many of you guys know what mofire is yeah do you know about mofire okay DJ Spook is someone who's very innovative you must always watch what he does and how his business model works because what he does is yes he's speaking to you guys now but there's a business model behind it that everything has a business model behind it okay including the self publishing concept so if there's any future authors that want to become you know authors that want to write a book please self publish your book don't go to a publisher okay don't ever go to a publisher anyway i released my book and within the first month guys within 30 days my book became a national best seller in south africa we sold over 5000 copies in the first month guys can i please get a huge round of applause <laughs> But the, the idea isn't about me it's about the fact that if you believe in whatever you doing right and you believe in your product or you believe in your service even if someone tells you no or tells you you're not good enough or what do you know about this thing you still go out and do it you can make it a success it's all about being persistent and persistent and consistent exactly guys another thing that's very important that a lot of entrepreneurs forget about is speaking things into existence okay we're living in south africa where unfortunately this isn't belgium it's not amsterdam where entrepreneurs are looked after and supported we're living in a system where people want you to be a corporate they want you to work for someone else that's exactly the system we're living in they want you to work for someone else okay so we're not taught to actually be proud of our our goals and ambitions we're not proud to stand there and say listen i want to make the forbes list in the next 2 years i want to do this in the next 2 years we we scared to do these things why because it's seen as something that's bad for you they want you to say listen i work for discovery i work for all mutual they want you to say that okay so what i'm saying is speak things into existence it's very important 5 years ago on the 12th of august 2014 
Guys, I always wanted to make the Forbes Africa list. It was a dream of mine since I was nine years old. I always loved business, but I always wanted to make that Forbes list. You know, the one where um, Bill Gates is in and all these big guys are in, you know? Even Donald Trump was in there. A lot of us don't like Donald Trump, but he's a good businessman, okay? <laughs> yeah. But all these guys are in this magazine and it lists the best entrepreneurs in the world. I wanted to be on that list. I always wanted it. Four or five years ago, I was at the gym the one day and um, they were hosting, well, they created Forbes Africa five years ago. Now, Forbes Africa is the same thing as Forbes, but it's just for the African continent, yeah. okay? And they had a launch of the event. So they were giving out t-shirts and caps. Guys, I went onto Instagram. I got a cap because they were launching it like in that area. I got a cap, put the cap down, took a picture of it on Instagram. And I said, in five, in four years from now, or not four years, sorry, in three years to four years, I'm going to get onto the Forbes Africa list. Four years later, in 2018, I made it onto the 30 under 30 Forbes Africa list. So what I'm saying is speak things into existence, guys. It's very, very important. So if, you, if you guys have a specific dream, don't be shy about it. Speak it out. Say, I want to make five, 500,000 in the next year. I want to open up my first business in the next year. And speak it. Don't be afraid because there's so much of value in speaking. I mean. I'll, I mean, one of our speakers that are going to come up right now, I literally became a client of his in the last 15 minutes. He does suits. He creates the most beautiful suits ever, okay? Guys, I don't know if you guys know GQ. Who knows about GQ? It's a men's fashion magazine, okay? You guys know about it? I made the GQ's best dress list, okay? I want to buy suits from this gentleman. Why? Because when you have the ability to network, when you speak to other people and you showcase what you actually have, when you speak things into existence, you must listen to this man speak about his business. He's one of the most passionate people I've ever seen. Because he's passionate about what he wants to achieve and about his business and about his service and his product, I automatically became a client. I already promised him I'm buying eight suits from him in the next month, without a doubt. I'm gonna buy eight suits from this man. So, do you understand what I'm saying to you guys? Speak your, speak your ambitions into existence. Don't be scared about it. Don't let people make you shy. Don't feel uncomfortable. If your friends make you feel uncomfortable, go find new friends. It's as simple as that. You know, they say one of the most fundamental things of entrepreneurs and why they fail is a thing called the fear of failure. So the fear of failure affects 55% of entrepreneurs. You stop yourself from doing well academically. You stop yourself from starting up a business. And it's not because you don't have it inside or you don't have the skills. It's because your friends are stopping you from becoming successful. Your friends are telling you, you know, don't do this. Because why? Not because you don't have the ability to do it. It's because they're scared to do it themselves or they couldn't do it themselves. Sure. So make sure that your friends are people that support you. You must be around like-minded people. You know, they always say, if there's nine wealthy people around you, guess who's going to be the 10th wealthiest person? You're going to be the 10th wealthiest person. If you're going to surround yourself around poor people, and I'm not saying poor by the amount of money they have, guys, you must understand, as an entrepreneur, there's poor as money and then there's poor as mindset. I would spend a million years with someone who's poor in money. I'll never spend one minute with someone who's poor in their mindset because that's the worst type of person to be around. So don't think that you need to have wealthy friends. You need to have people who are ambitious as you. If you're an ambitious young man and you still, or a woman for example, and you want to become successful, Find five other people that are like you. I promise you there's value in those people compared to finding people who might be wealthy, but they don't want to work with you. They don't want to support you. They don't want to help you. So it's very important that you have friends that are like-minded, people that can support you. That's one of the main reasons why entrepreneurs fail is because you don't have a team around you. You know, we were brought up in a system, I'm speaking about systems here all the time because unfortunately South Africa has the worst system. You know, when you go to high school, guys, what do they teach you in high school? They teach you to get graded individually, okay? You do a speech, you get a grade individually. You write an exam, you get a grade individually. Everything's about your individual results. Then you get out of, out of school, you get into university. It's similar, it's similar, but there's still a bit of teamwork. Then you get into the corporate space or as an entrepreneur and you figure out that it's nothing about being an individual. It's all about how you can actually manage with teams, how can you work with people. The most successful people, guys, I'm speaking now from experience. I've seen DJ Spoo myself. DJ Spoo is a, is a phenomenal man. He knows what he's doing. But that man has a team behind him that does a lot of great work for him, okay? There's no one will become successful by themselves. You look at Thibaut Touch, Thibaut Touch has a team behind him. Patrice Mutepe has a team behind him. Patrice Mutepe will never draft a contract himself in his life. Why? Because he has lawyers doing it for him. Patrice Mutepe will never write minutes to a meeting. Why? Because he has people working for him to do it for him. 
Matisse Mutepe doesn't have to sit down and strategize small things because he has teams working for him. You must understand the value of working with people. If you don't understand the value of working with people, you'll never become a successful entrepreneur. Am I right, guys? So the most important thing is that you have to learn how to be able to work around people, learn how to find people, create your team, you know what I'm saying. So they say an entrepreneur, a successful entrepreneur has three different types of people in a business, okay? For a business to be successful, there's to be three people involved in the business. There's to be an entrepreneur, there's to be a mechanic, and there's to be an admin person, okay? So you can't be all in one. You can never be all three in one. When you start a business, it makes sense. When you start a business, start off as one person. But as you grow, you need to find people that can work with you in a team. It's very, very important. So these are some of the fundamentals that a lot of entrepreneurs struggle with, guys. Is that these things, fear of failure, you know, having the ability to speak things into existence. We spend so much of time teaching people how to make money, but we don't teach them how to change their mindset first. That's why, how, how many times have you seen people who win the lotto? You know, someone won the Powerball the other day. I can promise you that person hasn't updated or fixed his mindset. That person will lose that 256 million or whatever it is in the next financial year. Why do you think sports stars become broke after they're done with their career? It's because they don't know how to manage money. They don't know how to be financially savvy. They don't know how to build the mindset of becoming successful. You can give someone all the money in the world, the next year it will be gone because they don't understand the value of money. And that's the important thing. That's why I'm saying, guys, when you want to become an entrepreneur, even if you're in a corporate space right now and you're thinking of becoming an entrepreneur, don't only spend time thinking about how you're going to make money. Spend time thinking about how can you build something sustainable for the future. There's too many of us on social media, on Instagram. Instagram is the worst thing created but it can also be the best thing ever you must understand that instagram puts so much of pressure on our young people because they think they need to live the lives that those people on instagram are living but most of them don't even live those lives themselves i'm speaking from experience because i work in the media industry i know exactly you know what's going on in that industry when you see people posting up on social media this lavish lifestyle most of them and i'm telling you most of them don't actually live that lifestyle just so you guys know that so don't have pressure on yourself to be or compare yourself to other people you don't have to do that compare yourself to you that's the most important thing if you if you know you failed at something yesterday do whatever it takes to become better but for yourself not for other people guys social media like i said is a very very bad thing it can be a very bad thing but at the same time it can be a fundamentally important and beautiful thing and he's going to speak about it now about how you can make money on e-commerce and on, on, on all these different platforms on social media. So I'm excited to also hear about that. But like I said, please don't ever feel pressurized by what you see on social media. When you see people in big houses and, and nice cars, I promise you most of those cars are rented cars. They don't actually own those cars. When you see people standing in front of houses, those houses are not owned by them, okay? So don't feel pressurized. If there's people that are doing well, congratulate them. We must support each other. But don't feel pressurized by what you see on social media. I'm telling you, 95% of it is fake. So please, guys, I, you don't understand how many people actually commit suicide in South Africa because of the peer pressure of social media. So many people compare themselves to lives that like, don't even exist. You know what I'm saying? Here you're sitting and watching someone driving an M4, going into their mansion, and you're thinking, I'm a student, how am I going to get to that level? I promise you, most of it isn't real. Just concentrate on yourself as, a, as an entrepreneur. The, the amount you can scale your business from nothing to something in one year, if you just concentrate on you, is incredible. There's people I know personally that started off with nothing, they had zero rand in their bank account. In one year of just focusing on themselves, you can make 5 million, 10 million, 15 million, and it's possible. Anything's possible in entrepreneurship. You know? And we need to move away from this whole concept of, of being 10 entrepreneurs, guys. 10 entrepreneurs is, is, is gone. It's in 2007, 2006, it's done, it's over. If you think you're going to be an entrepreneur, your business will last for one or two years when you know that person in office. When that person leaves, your business is gone with them. You know that. That's why most people fail. You need to concentrate on what's really important. And this gentleman is going to speak about it, which is now the whole concept of e-commerce. Okay? And I want him to, I'm not going to speak about it because it's something I want him to emphasize. But e-commerce is so important, guys. If you guys can understand, the, the market is changing completely. Every single year, the percentage of e-commerce sales are increasing every single year. If you start up a business online, you make more money nowadays than someone who wants to become a tender If you run a successful business online, you can become very successful. It's sustainable income. 
It's going to last with you forever. So please guys, I understand the value of we're living now in a different time zone. It's no longer tenderpreneurs. It's no longer looking for handouts. Now you can create sustainable income within yourself. Do you know what I'm saying? And that's the most important thing. So I know you guys have heard of this whole thing called the 4IR. Have you guys heard of the fourth industrial revolution? Mm -hmm. Guys, UKZN doesn't even offer half the things that are now going to create jobs in the future. Do you know what I'm saying? And that's unfortunate. We're still stuck on accounting, law, all the basic jobs, guys. What about what's coming up? Most of those jobs now are going to be done by robots. So what are they teaching us? They're teaching us to be in 2007, 2006, when we're in 2019. That's why I'm saying it's important that you guys have self-study. Universities are not going to do these things for you. You'll have to do it yourself. That's why we have YouTube. That's why we have all these places on, on, on the internet. Because it teaches you guys these platforms. And that's very, very important. Um, so like I said, please spend time. Guys, if you can, write this down. Spend time learning about robotics. Spend time learning about artificial intelligence. Learn about blockchain. Learn about all of these concepts, guys. Nowadays, and I've been speaking to the guys before. Nowadays, it's no longer about um, buying property. You know, when you guys do make money and become very successful and build up businesses, don't go and buy property, guys. The future now, and this is why the most successful people become more successful, is because they've got all the hidden secrets all with them. So we need to share the hidden secrets with everyone, am I right? Everyone needs to know how to really make money. Nowadays, it's not about buying property. Now it's about buying businesses. So you must buy businesses, you must buy shares in people's businesses, and you'll make a lot of money from it. That's the new idea of how to make money. But people don't teach you these things, you know? You'll never hear that at UKZN. They'll never, a business lecturer will never tell you that. Why will they not tell you that? Because they want you to be in the system. Okay, so it's very important, guys. Like I said, you need to move your mindset away from the system and start thinking for yourself. Think about how you can really make money. How, you know, now the future is completely different. People who have salaries and they earn 40,000 in a month, they are always gonna earn 40,000 in a month. But if you own an e-commerce site, for example, you earn 20,000 in this month, the next month you can earn 60,000 and it becomes sustainable income. The next month you can earn 100,000 and the next month you can earn 200,000 and. And it doesn't go down, it keeps on going up because the amount of your audience is increasing. Do you understand? So you don't have to be stuck on a 40,000 and for the rest of your, month, of your life. Because the unfortunate thing about 40,000 and a month is that as much as your salary isn't changing, your circumstances are changing. Every time you have a new child, it's, 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 it's more expensive, am I right? It's expensive. Every time you want to go and develop yourself, it costs money for courses. You have to pay for those things. Every time you want to buy stuff, it, your, your, your circumstances are increasing, but your salary is staying the same. And that's not how you become wealthy. That's how you stay in the system. So guys, please, like I said, just I want to emphasize it's very important that you guys spend time self-studying. Self-study about these things. Spend time on YouTube. Learn about the fourth industrial revolution. We, I know I'm busy writing a book at the moment, I'm not supposed to disclose it, but I'm writing a book with DJ Spoo at the moment about the fourth industrial revolution and how young people can succeed in it. If we don't have these conversations, you know the problem is society has made it boring for people to listen about this, but it makes it more fun for people to hear about fast cars and big houses, but that's not going to make you successful. You're just going to hear about someone else speaking about it and then you're going to go home and be in the same position. You know what I'm saying? We need to change the conversations we have with, 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 with our young people. Our conversation should be about progressive stuff. It shouldn't be about fast cars and houses. You can buy fast cars and houses when you, when you develop a system for the fourth industrial revolution. So get into robotics, get into uh, artificial intelligence. All of these things are very, very important, guys. I just want to emphasize it as well. Um, I want to also just touch on one more thing in particular. Okay, and I think this is one of the things that affects a lot of people, especially, actually everyone in the industry, everyone in South Africa as well, is this whole concept of, um, how, do I, how do I put this, um, the whole concept of, I'm trying to find the right word here, this whole, the whole concept of, of, of not having a support base, okay, it's very, very important that as a young person you find people who support you, like I said, but you need a support base of people. What happens is, like I said, you have to create teams among, among you. So for example, if you're good at finance, and you're good at marketing, and you're good at innovation, come together as a team, you can help each one of your businesses individually. Do you know what I'm saying? So I think that's one of the things I want to emphasize is that find people around you and work with them. What you guys should be doing at the end of this conversation is don't come and speak to us. 
speak among yourselves. Well, speak to us, but speak among yourselves and see what you guys each offer. You know what I'm saying? Or what you want to start up. And write down all of these, all the information down. Say, you know, for example, you want to open up a, um, a restaurant. You want to, you want to become a chef. There's a link there. Do you see the link? You know what I'm saying? There's opportunity wherever you go. So guys, please open up the idea of creating a supportive nature. You know, I want to emphasize this and I want you guys to maybe start it among yourselves. It's called a business network, okay? I want you guys to open up a UKZ and business network just like what you guys are doing now, but make it more for every single student to form part of it. And what happens is it creates sustainable income within your own, within your own university. So what happens is every time I need a service, I can only use people that are coming from my own university and that's how you become successful. The Jewish people do it and they do it so well, guys. We must learn from them. The Jewish people keep money within their own community, okay? If, for example, I want something, I can't go to anyone but a Jew. If I'm a Jew and I, and I own a business and I need a service, I can't go to a Muslim, I can't go to a, a black person, I can't go to a white person, I can only go to a Jew. That's the rule. And we need to learn, and that's why they became so successful and wealthy, and that's why they own the world today. It's because they understand the, how to keep money within themselves. We need to learn the same concept as well. You know, and white people are good at it as well, but unfortunately, Indians and blacks are not as good at it. At it. And we need to learn that concept. We need to learn how to support each other. And that comes from the fact that we don't support each other enough as, as young people. When someone starts up a business, we look at criticizing them instead of supporting them. And that's the biggest issue. How many of us sit down and consider what's wrong with the business instead of helping the person out? Because what you're doing is when you actually support a, a business within your own community, you're actually building up the community. Do you know what I'm saying? So guys, please, that's one of the most fundamental things. That's what I'm saying. A support system is very important. Among yourselves, support each other. That's the, one of the biggest things is support each other. Support each other. If someone has a business, don't go elsewhere. Don't go support someone in Joburg on Instagram that you see, you know, whatever. Support your own among yourselves. Support people within your own community. And that's very, very important. That's how you build up wealth. Because you're guaranteeing clients. You know what I'm saying? In this room, you'll get three more clients than what you would have had before. Do you get what I'm saying? And that's just the whole idea behind it. Um, I just want to open up the floor for like three or four questions if you guys have any. Um, just for this segment, just to close up this segment as well. So if you guys have any questions, you can just raise your hand. My question was based on your first point when you started to speak about the people who started the companies and actually in two year time everything just ran out. I'm a victim of that and I'm still trying to find a way out. I registered money in 2017 and there was all fun when everything was officially registered everywhere in Pretoria. When it comes to do the real work and when it comes to find the, the real job and the real tenders. I was kind of looking on getting maybe subcontracted by Big Five, Big Five, or any other big companies, but there was no luck. I think it's because I was focusing on getting subcontracted by big companies instead of looking down. I'm still looking a way forward to help myself expand the information. Okay, so, so I agree with you. Like That's what happens to most people, right? And like, like I emphasize the idea of tenderpreneurs. Tenderpreneurs are never sustainable. It's, an, it's never sustainable business. If your business depends on people, like individuals that are in position, you'll never have a sustainable business because when that person gets fired or removed or moved somewhere else, your whole business disappears immediately. So that's one of the things I would consider is always consider the concept of a sustainable business, okay? I wanna emphasize one more thing. This is probably the most important thing I can say to you guys. It's called strategic partnerships, okay? We're living in South Africa, we must use policies to our, to our benefit. It's very important. You guys are extremely, extremely privileged in one thing that people don't know about. It's a secret, but people don't know about it. Because of apartheid, okay? There's a lot of white businesses that require, why, 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 why did our government create in the last 15 or 20 years? It's called Triple B E, am I right? Mm -hmm. White companies, for them to get big business, they have to have BEE partners, okay? A lot of them today, a lot of them, I'm speaking about hundreds of them, don't have BEE partners in their businesses. And I would highly recommend that you guys start understanding the concept of strategic partnerships. What happens is they give you opportunities. In other words, if I'm, I'm Hendrik, okay? I'm Hendrik and I own 
a big company, massive company, makes 400 million a year, okay? I need a BEE partner for me to get bigger business. So someone like you, for example, who's a startup business, you can come in and he can make you his BEE partner, you get 35% of the company immediately, and you, and you run the company with him. Now imagine, you're getting, you're how old are you now? 18 years old. At 18 years old, he already owns 35% of a 500 million in a year company. And that's just because a lot of people need BE partners in their businesses. So guys, I, I promise you it's a secret. No one knows these things. I would highly recommend that you guys understand the concept of strategic partnerships. There's so much of opportunity available out there. That's more sustainable than being an attendant in here. I would highly recommend that you guys understand. Please research on the whole concept. It's a very smart thing. It's very, very smart. It can make you a millionaire overnight and it's good money. It's really good money. So, any other questions, guys? Yeah, you just broke up and you want to buy for the same thing. Is it because everyone is doing it or is it not a process that you need? So, so, it's just about looking, it's profitable. It's profitable, but it's about looking what's going to make you more money. Like Dubai, for example, guys. How many of you guys know about Dubai? Dubai is built on, it's self built, it's self made, okay? Everything was created by man. The whole place was created by man. It looks beautiful, but everything was created through construction. Today, if you buy, if you buy property in Dubai, you're losing money. 15 years ago, 10 years ago, if you're buying property in Dubai, you become a billionaire overnight. You need to understand the system and where you are at the moment. You need to understand how the government is doing, how's the system doing, and how's policy is doing in your country. Buying property now in Dubai would be the silliest thing to do. If I was living in Dubai, I would invest in tourism because tourism is the highest form of income for, for Dubai. Look at South Africa, property is no longer our highest source of income. Buying businesses, entrepreneurs are. The unemployment rate means that the government is spending a lot of money on entrepreneurs, which means there's a lot of entrepreneurs that are being empowered. If you can buy into a young person's business and they get empowered, you're already earning a lot of money from them. Do you understand? So it's all about understanding the system of where you are actually at this very moment. It's, it's important that you guys do a lot of research beforehand to understand what's really making a lot of money in the country and what's not, you know. Any other questions, guys? So, so that's like a business network, okay? That's like a group of people who come together and say, I'm going to support you no matter what. Whatever business you have, I'll support you. Before I go elsewhere, I'll come to your business first. That's important. I don't think, I don't think that needs government intervention. I think if you build up, I would rather spend time turning 600 people into 6,000 people, and then you create your own economy among yourselves. You don't have to be dependent on the government. Remember, the government also has its own pros and cons. Yes, it's nice getting support from the government, but firstly, will the government actually end up paying you? That's something you have to consider. When they do pay you, they pay you two years late, okay? It's just the policy the system we're living in, guys. If you, it's just where we are at the moment, you know? So you need to understand, that's what I'm saying. Don't concentrate on people or situations. Concentrate on the system. Understand what system you're in. I would concentrate on building up a 600 member group and make it 6,000 people and watch how your businesses will become successful. Because when I have a clothing company, for example, and I know that out of that 600 people, 10% of them are gonna want my suits, for example, I'm gonna get a certain number of sales. If you increase that number from 600 to 6,000 people, that 10% changes, the value of people are more. There's more people that are gonna want your suits. So you don't need to then go to the government, you just need to increase your, 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 your expand your amount of people that you're including in that, in that network. I think that's very important. Um, just to clarify on the question that you asked, he's asking it in terms of the startup capital. Oh, yeah. Here we're working with people who are unemployed. So like for you to have a startup capital, 
capital is more important when you are starting a business. So it is asking in that section of the startup capital. Yeah, but, but that's, that's not actually a business. That's a network that you're creating. Because there's no actual business happening. There's business happening from two people that are in the network. But you're not actually, you're not playing the middleman. You're just creating a platform for them to... It's like, for example, if I'm standing here and you do business with you, and you do business with you, I don't get money from it. So I don't have a business. It's not a business. But you can actually get support from like NYDA, IDC, but it won't be like a massive funding or grant because it's not an actual business. It's just like a campaign that you're running or like a kind of a program that you're kind of creating. And then you'd have to be more of like an MPO, a non-profit organization, for you to do something like that and get good support from the government. That's why I'm saying it's better for you to um, scale it out, get more people involved, then you don't need the government. You can do it yourself. Anything, any other questions? Um, can you just go back to the stage you made the problems? Um, you just want to tell me it's good. Um, it's, it's a um, 